there, and welcome to Finger Food Miniatures. My name is Karen, and today I'm making a cake based on an illustration that I did on my art channel. If you'd like to see the artwork, you can go ahead and follow the link that is in the description below. The artwork is something that I did as a commission back in January for somebody that commissioned me to do a cute cafe scene, and the scene featured this cake that I just really enjoyed coming up with, and it was a lot of fun to draw. So I thought it'd be really fun to recreate it in miniature. And I think that it looks pretty true to the artwork, and I feel pretty happy with the result because it's the most detailed cake I've ever done, and I'm quite proud of it. This video is not exactly a tutorial. I'll kind of talk a little bit about what I'm doing if I feel like it needs explaining. Like here, I'm sticking these layers together with a little bit of translu translucent <laughs> liquid Sculpey, TLS. Uh, this is just to keep the cake layers from separating because I wanted to have only three layers in this cake, but my pasta machine rolls things out too thin to be the right thickness for a cake layer, so I stick two together to make the right size. Um, and I'm kind of blending the edges together and all that good stuff. This cake did pose some challenges and I did make some awkward mistakes that I- are mistakes I knew I shouldn't have made. Uh, for instance, I did bake it a little bit too long, and one of the toppings got a little too brown. The strawberry, unfortunately, is a little bit darker than I would like. It's not super noticeable, and I can come back. I think I'm gonna come back and uh, paint it a little bit with some acrylic paint to cover up the burnt <laughs> burntness of it, but I, unfortunately, it turned out a little bit browner than I wanted it to on the strawberry. I also had some uh, challenges with filming this because I've been struggling with figuring out how to make my filming more efficient for this channel. Today I'm just doing a, a sort of time lapse because I want to get all of the information in to you guys but not uh, have take forever and unfortunately Making this a tutorial would have made it very, very long. What I did just now, by the way, was I smoothed out the surface of that cake using some cornstarch on the tips of my finger. And right now what I'm doing actually is I'm going to be making the piping for the border of the cake. So what I did was I took a ruler that has, uh, um, the increments are raised so that you can indent the clay with those increments so that you get the same sized cut every time. And I just follow each line and cut, and it makes all of my little pieces the same size, which when you're making piped borders is kind of important. I mean, it's not the most critical thing in the world, but it is helpful. And right now what I'm doing is making little strings for the sprinkles, because sprinkles, those are something that you need to have very, very thin clay for, and you have to bake them and then cut them up into little pieces, and initially I was cutting these with an X-Acto knife. I don't think I have a clip of that. No, I do, but I didn't. I didn't want to include it. It took too long. And what was happening was, when you use an X-Acto knife to cut these little things, it shoots them off everywhere. And the easiest way to do this is to just lay it on your forefinger and pinch it with your thumbnail and they break into little pieces and it's a lot easier than going hunting for every little piece <laughs> because they just fly off into nowhere land and they're really hard to f keep track of. Um, so that's kind of my little tip from this video. Now what I'm doing is when I'm applying the sprinkles I need to have something for them to stick to because they have been baked so they're not sticky anymore they're not going to adhere to the clay as well. So I'm using some TLS like glue and I'm just sprinkling them on there and the TLS bakes clear so it, it doesn't uh, have that white color once the cake bakes. But it, this is a really effective way of bonding those little sprinkles to the cake. Next I'm putting on the border. This can be kind of hard with all those sprinkles on there. That's something that I learned was that if I'm going to do this, to maybe like scrape off the sprinkles around the bottom edge or try not to get the uh, TLS right down to the edge of the cake. That's definitely something I will be <laughs> keeping an eye out for next time. Um, 
it, and I don't know. I really like the way that this border looks. It's a simple design. It's really easy to do. All I did is I rolled those little pink chunks into balls and then I pinched one end of each of the balls so that it would make a teardrop shape and then I just overlapped the teardrops and it gives it that nice simple piped look. And right now I'm doing the really thin border of, of dark chocolate that's around this cake. By the way, the cake is frosted with Bake Shop Brown Sculpey, which is really, uh, it's kind of a softer clay than the regular Sculpey 3, and it's just a touch lighter than the Sculpey Suede, so I kind of use that as my milk chocolate color, and then I use Suede for my dark chocolate. It's the only color that I can find that looks just like uh, dark chocolate and uh, chocolate cakes. I feel like the regular, um, like the Bake Shop Brown is just too light to look like a chocolate cake. So I really recommend that if you're going to start doing cakes like this, if you're going to do chocolate cake, definitely pick up some of the Sculpey Suede because it is the best that I have found for color matching. That being said, I have not tried a whole lot of Fimo or uh, the Primo style Sculpey, <laughs> so there's some there's some other options out there, I'm sure, but this is just what I've found to be the most effective. I'm moving on to the strawberry now, and what I did was I used some translucent and balled it into a little cone shape, and I stuck it on the end of a needle tool, poked little holes on it all over the place to indicate the little seeds, and then I brushed it with some red and pink uh, chalk pastel, and I didn't brush all the way to the very top of the strawberry. I wanted it to look a little more natural, so I left a little bit of it white at the top, and then I brushed a little bit of the yellow and green mixed together. Personally, I do not have a yellow-green, uh, I don't really have the correct color of green from, from my set of pastels, so I have to mix yellow and green together. Um, otherwise, if you had a bright yellow-green color, then you wouldn't have to mix, but anyway. So here I am, I'm mixing the pink frosting, and I'm trying to get, I'm, I need two different consistencies, which is why you'll see later on, I mix two different batches of it. Uh, this first batch is the big blob of frosting that goes on top of the cake, so it needs to stiff, be a little more stiff, and then the second batch is like the um, liquidy stuff that you dip the hockey in. And I needed some of that for the pink and for the chocolate. And the chocolate looks like it gets lighter as you mix it with the TLS, but as it bakes it darkens back up. So that's a little note that you might want to um, know, I guess. <laughs> that might be helpful to know. I'm really happy with the way that the strawberry turned out, but it was really hard to get it to dip because it was turning on the end of the needle tool. Like, as I turned the needle tool, the strawberry wouldn't turn with it because it wasn't snug on the end of the needle tool. So I feel like this, the chocolate didn't um, turn out quite as nicely as I would have liked on my strawberry, but hey, I'm still learning and the, the chocolate sauce didn't want to stick to the strawberry because the strawberry still had the powder from the chalk pastel, so there were some challenges with that. The best way to get the Pocky to have a nice even coat is to get a big blob on there and then place it against the edge of the plate and roll until the blob kind of evens into a nice uh, coat, I guess, a nice layer of that stuff. And I didn't show it, but I baked those Pocky sticks before I put the TLS on there because it's a lot easier. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much darn near impossible to get that saucy stuff on a flexible little stick of clay, a little string of clay. So you have to bake it. I baked it for, I think, 10 minutes. So I didn't totally bake it, but it's, um, it was baked enough that it wasn't all stringy, floppy anymore. <laughs> 
So this part was probably the most challenging, or one of the most challenging pieces, parts of this, steps of this, I guess, and also the biggest mistake. I didn't cut the slice out of the cake until after I did this, and normally if I'm putting uh, TLS frosting on a cake, I cut the cake slice out first, and I didn't do that in this one, which was a huge mistake. It made it really hard to detail the frosting. I mean, it made it really hard to detail the slice. It made it really hard to give the cake and the slice texture. And it was really hard to get a clean cut without all of that pink just smudging along the interior of the cake. Also, it just went everywhere and got all over the outside of the cake, so I really need to practice a little bit more with putting just blobs of this stuff on a cake, and I think that I'm going to need to invest in some tiny Ziploc bags and turn them into little piping bags because I feel like that would make my life a man a just a bajillion times easier. I don't know what I was going to say there, but yeah, so the cake was... Uh, really hard to slice because I had also, um, it had just been like smushed onto that, um, little metal circle. So the cake was like really tough. It was really stuck on there. So it was really hard to get it off and I was scared that I was going to damage it. But in the end it turned out alright. Um, and like I said, it did take some doing to uh, texture this without getting frosting just literally all over my fingers. So that's something that I would recommend if you are going to try making a cake like this. Never put that stuff on until you're done <laughs> texturing your cake uh, and until after you've cut out a slice because otherwise it can be really hard to work with. Um, another thing I wish I had done was taken the slice off when I put the cake back on that circle and textured it, and I didn't do that, and so I kept touching the frosting that was on this slice itself as I was trying to texture the cake, so I kind of got in my own way. I was sort of, I don't know, I just wasn't really focused, I guess, and that made it kind of difficult. So here I am putting the Pocky onto the cake. Excuse me, my son came in. Anyway, so here I am. I'm putting on the Pocky and the strawberry. And the Pocky I put on without baking the sticks again. I didn't uh, bake it to harden the um, frosting that was on the Pocky because I didn't want to bake those little thin sticks too much. I didn't want them to burn. And unfortunately, I had baked the strawberry beforehand. And I don't feel like that was really necessary in hindsight. Um, at the time I thought it was because I didn't want the chocolate frosting to smear, but I don't think that it was necessary. I will try to test that in another project, but that I think is why the strawberry <laughs> burned. Um, so here I am, I'm putting them on the baking sheet, and because there are tiny little details on this cake, I covered it with a foil tent. And the finished project is really cute. I'm super happy with it, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I do apologize for this not being a tutorial right out, but I feel like there were so many little details that weren't their own tutorials that it would just not make sense to do a tutorial this big <laughs> for this detailed of a cake. So in the future, I will do t tutorials for each of the little decorations, like the Pocky, the Strawberry, the sprinkles, all of that good stuff, and that is going to be what my upcoming series will be all about. I do appreciate you guys watching. Please check out my art channel if you have not seen it yet. I really appreciate you guys uh, coming along with me on this practice run here. I do know that I need to figure out my lighting and all sorts of things like that because there are some things that I could definitely improve in my filming process here on my Finger, Mi Finger Food Miniatures channel. And I hope that you guys subscribe for the next video, which will either be going up Mondays or Wednesdays. It all depends on when I edit stuff, but I will be uploading a video either Monday or Wednesday next week. 
I'm thinking that it's probably going to be Wednesday because I've discovered Mondays is just not doable. <laughs> so it's, it's too hard for me to get stuff up on Mondays. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this little sneak peek of the artwork being colored and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much!